Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God, guide you according to His will. Well, in order for the greatness of God to be established in your life and dwell in you and make you His temple, His house, His church, in order for God to dwell with you, then you obviously, you, just like all of us, you have to obey His voice, His word, and submit yourself to His direction. I know that this is one of the greatest problems that human beings have. Human beings were born to be rebellious, were already born in sin and to rebel against everything and everyone, to rebel against order, against discipline, against what is right and fair, what is correct, against the truth, which is lie, right? Against everything that is truthful. That's the will of man, of mankind, rebellious by nature. So Jesus speaks a lot. He insists, pay attention, Jesus himself insists that we will have a different conduct from those who are in the world. Whoever wants the kingdom of heaven will pay the price for it. They will do what needs to be done. And they won't be measuring the amount of sacrifice they have to do. Because they know that a sacrifice that is done for the kingdom of heaven is eternal meaning you make the sacrifice and your life will be it's a guarantee that you have eternal life the Holy Spirit will guarantee that to you and Jesus said like this if you loved me you would keep my commandments you keep my word and then he said, if you love me, then you will keep my word. And my father and I will come and dwell in you. So when you watch the series Kings, you can observe in these past episodes, you can see that David's, King David's focus, whose heart was after God's own heart. You can see that David wanted to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. The Ark represents God. It is a symbol, a type, a representation of God amongst his people, the Israelites. But the ark symbolizes what? It would eventually, and today we know that, back then of course they didn't know, the ark would eventually represent each of us. That's it. Think with me. David made the effort to bring the, the ark to Jerusalem so that there would be the presence of God and, and all peoples could go to Jerusalem. But when Jesus came, how wonderful is that? Jesus built the ark in each of, of his followers, in each person that truly loves him, because those who love him, they don't love, you know, with a feeling of their heart. They don't love as other people love. They don't love like other people love money or as they love family. They love the mother, the children. They don't love the way they love their dreams, their personal projects. No, 
the love that God requires from each of us, that He demands from us, is something extremely glorious because it involves the surrender, the dedication, obedience to His word, to His voice. So He said, He who loves me keeps my word which means they observe my word and they follow it. Those who don't love me, they, they couldn't care less. But those who love me, they will hear my voice, my word, and will follow it. So there are two types of people in this world. There are those who truly love the Lord Jesus and they pay the price, they sacrifice their life for him. Sometimes they lose mother, father, children, husband, they, married, they lose marriage even because of Jesus. That's how it is. It's the cross that we have to carry. Those who love Jesus, they have, they have to carry their cross, which is to pay the price to follow Him day after day after day. Because Jesus is the truth. Whoever follows Jesus follows the truth. And whoever follows the truth contradicts those who lie, those who enjoy deceit and lies. So in order for you to follow Jesus, and he said that he who wants to come after me, let him deny himself. You have to deny your personal opinions, you have to deny lies, you have to deny having a bad character, the easy ways of this world, you know, the easy way people do things, you have to deny them, firstly. And then, secondly, you have to take up your cross. That's exactly what I said here. You will start to follow Jesus, you will contradict the ones from your own house first. You're going to suffer. You're going to suffer for Jesus because they will persecute you, they will hate you, they will slander you. If you are that person that easily feels offended because somebody spoke ill about you, oh, if you surrender your life to Jesus, you are going to grow. If you want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, you have to pay the price. There's no other way. And it doesn't matter what you think or you don't think, or your opinion, you, you have to think as God does. Those who love God keeps His word. Jesus said, then the Father and I will come and dwell within them. So you become an ark. You become the presence of God wherever you go. And that's why Jesus also said that whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, from within them would flow rivers of living water. And there, dear friend, rivers of living water would flow. So this cost, this sacrifice to follow Jesus, all of us have to, to make if we want to inherit eternal life. And then he said, take up your cross, then come and follow me. So you have to follow him. And not to follow your dreams, your desires, your lusts. I know that in the Bible, there are many promises, more than 8,000 promises from God. But the first promise of God is, if we allow the Lord Jesus to reign in our lives and follow in His footsteps, then the spirit of righteousness will guide us, will guide us for all eternity. Obviously, that when you walk in truth, you, you have to confront lies, you have to confront the fake news, you have to stay strong, but God won't allow you or I to suffer beyond what we are able to bear. So this is the price. You have to have this understanding, the understanding of the sacrifice that you have to make. If you want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, you have to pay the price.
It's difficult, it's hard, it's sacrificial, yes, yes and yes. However, it's what Jesus gives us, it's the proposal he made. And every person has to decide for themselves. So, those who want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, those who do not want to have their soul thrown in the lake of fire and brimstone, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, if you want to deliver your soul from the eternal, eternal suffering, then you have to give your soul to Jesus and to live according to his word, to obey him. And you have to prove to yourself, you have to prove that you truly are so that you can conquer what God has promised, okay? May God bless you all. We are living the days that precede the fast of Daniel. And the fast of Daniel is a sacrifice. Oh, Bishop, but please, don't come with cheap talk, okay? Don't, don't come with excuses, questioning, asking questions that you already know the answer to. If you want to do the fast of Daniel, you, you have to let go of the world, let go of social media, you have to let go of the glamour of social media. You are going to have to let go of your own self, of secular information, entertainment, and you have to put all of your mind, your soul, your body, you have to immerse yourself in the Word of God. And on top of that, in a more practical way, you are going to do something good for your neighbor. For your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? Your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, your colleagues at work. The person that is closest to you, you are going to do good to them. You are going to pray for them. You are going to treat them with respect. You are going to change the way that you speak to them. You are going to speak the tone of your voice to communicate with them so that they can see in you a person who is of God, that they will also be touched by the Holy Spirit. Okay? From the 25th of June, the fast of Daniel. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God.